Use the Force, Luke. Not the Jedi Force, but Porter's Five Forces. Ha <laughs> ha. Don't fall to the dark side. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> subscriber 13, he's just gone down to 11. <laughs> right, oh, Porter's five forces. So who is Porter? So if you remember, uh, it, he's just a theorist. So remember we talked about Cotter or Lewin? Yeah, it's just a guy who came up with an idea that could explain a model of how businesses could um, understand where it fits into the current competitive environment and where perhaps opportunities are uh, or reasons that a business might need to change. Okay, so this is straight. You guys need to make these notes straight from, so um, there might be a question which asks you the purpose of Porter's five forces model. Okay, and this is basically the purpose, yeah? And um, a good term to use in there would be um, to see where a business fits in the current competitive environment. Cool? So it's used to, um, sometimes called a competitive analysis, to decide um, if it is viable to enter a new market uh, or expand into an existing one. So when we are looking at the model, we are going to judge the five forces as either strong or weak. Okay? Now I'll give you a minute to take whatever you need from that page before we write down the five forces and um, talk a little bit about each one. If you wanted to, whilst we're going through it, if you've got your book with you, um, there's, the book does a diagram quite well and it's on page 133. If you want to have that open at the same time, uh, it might be beneficial. And what we might do is as we work through the five forces, we might use an example. We're going to talk about supermarkets and Aldi. Uh, as you guys all know about Aldi, right? You guys are familiar with the concept of Aldi? Yes? Anyone ever been to Aldi? Okay, we've all been to Aldi, so that might be our example um, for Porter's Five Forces. Okay, good. Give you another minute. You need to go to the unfaked can shop, man, and sort out your. That's right, I scrub every night and I just look at the tiger. See? Right, with girls, why would you ever do that? <coughs> if it stays on that long, it looks like weird. So I found that is moisture. Reckon Mr. Herbert, oh, hang on, this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> he might be stalking me from. You know, I actually told him I had a YouTube channel. He had a go at me. Um, yeah. Because I told him I had like two subscribers or something. He laughed at me. Wow. Mate, I'm trying to, you know, go about teaching and learning in an innovative way. Don't have a go at me. Righto. Um, you guys, here we go. So there are five forces. Now, if you look at your book, um, they all kind of flow. The book describes it as a diagram that all flow into. Um, this one, which is called competitor rivalry, okay, or um, Ms. Chris um, sort of PowerPoint talks about rivalry among existing firms. They're the same thing, right? So the first force, if you want to talk about it, is um, the rivalry that already exists in the market between existing um, competitors. So if we think about supermarkets, how would we classify, if we're talking about Aldi and their entry into Western Australia in terms of supermarket industry, how do we classify the um, rivalry amongst existing firms? Absolutely. We'd say it's high, isn't it? Yeah. Even though there is only two competitors, the rivalry that exists between them is very high. Cool. So 
So if you wanted to, in your notes, as you're making notes on, um, you know, the, the definition, if you like, of the, the force, maybe we just go through and add in, if we're talking about A as an example, or well, good to use an example, um, in this case, the rivalry is already high. Between two major competitors. Okay. So, next one. The next force is the level of customer buying power, which means the whether customers have sufficient power to force down prices for better quality. So, so, in our example, do customers actually have any power in, super, in, in our industry? What do you think? Would it be high or low? Katarina? I agree. Why? No, it's not. Because food is a necessity. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a. Um, everyone needs food. People are going to go to the supermarket. It's not customers that really dictate the price. It's really other factors in there. Yeah. So in this case, in our Audi example, um, in that industry, customer buying power is low because of the necessity of the product. Really, isn't it? Yeah. If it was economics, we'd call it the elasticity of the demand of the product. <clears throat> so can you see why? Because it is an essential product, that would be a reason. If I'm Aldi, I'd be concerned. If I'm Aldi and I'm using the whole Porter's Fire Forces in total, yeah? and I'm analysing each one, I go, uh oh, well, there is two major competitors and it is highly competitive, that's a negative, but if everyone needs to buy food, customer buying power is low, that's a positive, certainly take that into consideration. Do you see how it's all kind of working, it's going to work in, uh, sort of working together, yeah? The third one is level of supplier bargaining power. So, do farmers have any power over the supermarket control? The question is really. In our example, do farmers or suppliers have any power to adjust prices or have an impact in any way on the supermarket? They have a little bit. A little bit? Yeah. yeah. Well, it depends because even in Australia, they don't like to strike or whatever. They can always like just buy from them, like in terms of China. Absolutely. Because, yeah, because of globalisation, yeah. if the Australian farmers kick off, then the supermarkets are just going to source their, their products from elsewhere. Absolutely. So what we're saying really is low, isn't it? Yeah. yeah? That um, suppliers don't necessarily have too much of an ability to impact um, on, on the business operations, yeah? Um, it's quite the opposite, actually, because you guys probably don't know about the milk wars that happened. I don't know if you remember the milk wars that happened a couple of years ago, uh, and how you know Coles and Woolies both it's still even today um, basically forced farmers to accept a lower price for milk because they wanted to put two liters of milk at two bucks, and that was their marketing ploy. That was what both major supermarket chains did, and farmers were just forced to accept it. Uh, otherwise, they lost the contract. So, 
in this case, supply of bargaining power is quite low. Okay, last two. Right, I can get on the tree. All right, let's judge. So we are, let's imagine we are Audi. Yeah, we're going to be a new entrant, but is there any other new entrants which are going to come into the market and threaten, or is there any other in, in supermarket, is there anything else which is going to have an impact on um, our possible profits and our possible ability to operate in this space? No, not necessarily, no. So are we saying, because there is actually, in, in the near future, um, I would still say it's low, um, but did you know companies like Amazon are actually looking to expand into this space? So in the, in the United States, Amazon has just bought a, a major supermarket chain because they want to get into home delivery, so you don't even have to go to the shop. You know, it's building on that Woolworths and Coles both home deliver. That Amazon would like to do the same thing, just for, but from a warehouse. They will not have a physical shop. And it's already operating. Um, you basically look for whatever you want online and it gets delivered by Amazon, like any other Amazon product. So there are, you know, there are going to the possibility <coughs> of new entrants into the industry is still low, but it is, you know, something to be aware of. Okay, last one. Threat of substitutes, substitute products or service. So it is supermarkets and it is food. And how would we judge this one? If we didn't go to the supermarket and we wanted to substitute, I mean, is there an option here? Not really, is there? The only possible thing you might say is, well, people can drive themselves, and there is a push for that in terms of sustainability and. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so eat fresh. I think. It is actually because I tried it. Because the first one you get is only ten bucks. It's really good. So you get a box. What um, Jess is talking about is um, there's a company out there called Eat Fresh, which the first time you order with them will give you all the ingredients for four you know, dinner meals for four people um, for a week, basically, four or five meals, and it's and it's meat and vegetables, and it gives you the instructions on how to cook them. Basically, it's everything together in one packet, and it's all colour coded. It's very very simple, um, and it comes to your door, and they deliver it, and it was for ten bucks as an introductory offer for the first box. It obviously gets a lot more expensive after that. So I've done it twice. My wife signed up, and I signed up two different email addresses. Fantastic. So two weeks worth of food for a family of four for ten dollars each week. Awesome. Then obviously the further you do it, the pricing gets a bit more realistic. Um, yeah, it is a substitute, absolutely. As with people kind of there is a push for people to, to grow their own and become more self-sufficient in that way. Is it, is it ever going to really erode into the power of the major supermarket chains? Probably not. Okay? So if you were Audi and you looked at the whole lot in total, we've got really a bit of problem here with a high rivalry in terms of the existing competition, but we've got low customer buying power, low supply of bargaining power, um, a low threat of new entrants, and not many substitutes. Can you see why Audi have moved into the market? Yeah, because really, when you've only got, admittedly, they're very, very powerful coal and reserves, but there's only two. There was absolutely space for a major player to come into the into our supermarket. Yeah, it was just begging to happen. Um, because you know we can actually over 25 million people. You know that, right? Our market is growing. Was that IGA? Is that currently the main? It does. Business? But IGA is struggling. Why, what are the reasons, and it, it all links in, we could talk about it as well, what's the reason why IGA is struggling? What, what was the only reason that IGA really was successful a year, two years ago, in Western Australia? Keep going. 